the Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 13th chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Now Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and just then appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, There are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, but not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he had said this, all his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at the wonderful things that he was doing. The gospel of our Lord. Praise Praise to you, you, O Christ. Christ. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. You may not know this, but I I have the joy and privilege of of teaching uh, lay ministers how to preach in the North Carolina Synod, and I'm looking forward to a big retreat in late September where we get a new group together. When you teach people how to preach, sometimes you got to give them training wheels, and one of the training wheels is just to give them an outline, to say, just follow an outline. Here, here, you know, do, do three things or do this. One of my favorite outlines for training wheels is, is four simple questions. Where is the trouble in the text? Where is the trouble in the world? Where is the good news in the text? Where is the good news in the world? So let's strap those training wheels on and ride through today's gospel lesson and see what we learn. You can use this in any Bible study. You can use this in your personal devotions. Trouble in the text. Wow. Well, that's pretty obvious. You see it right away. There's a woman, back trouble, bent over. I mean, it says that she is extremely bowed. It's the same word for, you know, bowing like that, except she can't get back up. So think about that. Maybe, we ought to get up and walk around like that to see what it feels like. It doesn't feel good. And your eyes, you're not looking up. You're not seeing anything. Uh, she's been dealing with this for 18 years. Any of you who've ever wrestled with any back trouble in your life know it is a horrible burden. The worst part is you can't get comfortable enough at night to sleep and cannot receive the healing both physically and mentally that you need. So the trouble in this text is apparent and obvious, except you need to open your other eye because there's actually two troubles here. The woman... And the leader of the synagogue, he too has a problem. He too has trouble. He is like the older son in the parable of the prodigal son. He cannot feel the joy in someone else being rescued because it has messed up his little organized world. 
The word for him saying that he's indignant, it means extreme grief. He is grieving because something has died, something has changed in his world through this miraculous work of Jesus with this woman. And he is angry about it, and he's going around and letting everybody in the synagogue know that this is not a good thing. So there's two kinds of trouble in the text. Our second question, where is trouble in the world? Wow. Well, when we look at the woman, just think about that. Think about her as an image of trouble in the world. Somebody whose back is bent over with heavy burden and can't seem to get a break. Wow. I, I think immediately when I look at the news of the week, I think of people living in the parts of Africa that have been ravaged by drought, and now the grain shipments that they would normally get from Ukraine are not happening in the volume that is necessary. Their burden is increasing. How much more can they bear? When I look at the woman in the story, I see that all she can see are shoes and feet. She has to keep her eyes on the ground. She can't look up and see people in the eyes. And I think of women in Afghanistan who now must cover their heads, must avoid eye contact, and cannot let their eyes focus on the words of a textbook or a computer screen. Their back is bent, and their load is getting heavier. Well, what about the leader of the synagogue? What is he an image of? In our world, do we have that trouble? People who don't want others rescued because it disrupts my beautiful little world that I have? I think we can all look in the mirror on that one and realize that that is the case. There's one more bit of trouble there in the gospel that we see in the world. It's said that that woman just appeared in the synagogue. Well, it means she left the back porch where all the women and children sit and has broken into the men-only section of the synagogue where Jesus is teaching. She has appeared, and Jesus sees her and heals her, and that unleashes a boatload of trouble. That's the other trouble in the world. Wherever the work of Jesus is being done, there is pushback by those who do not like the change. Wow. Trouble in the text. Trouble in the world. We can't just stop there. There's got to be more. As always, when in a dark place, I resort to humor. I don't know why. Lifts my spirits, gives me a new perspective. And I'm reminded of the time that a Domino's driver was tasked with teaching a new delivery guy the system. He said, what we're going to do is we're going to work my shift together tonight. And we're going to, I'll do most of the work at the beginning of the night, but it'll show, slowly shift more and more to you where you're carrying the whole load by the end. And we'll just split the tips all night. Deal? Deal. So they go out, and the veteran does most of the delivery in the first half hour and comes back to the car and splits the tips. Sometimes he takes the guy with him so he can watch all the steps. They come back to the car, split the tips. Then they start to change, and it's working well. Finally, he says, next stop, I want you to do solo. I'm just going to wait in the car. And, of course, the next stop is delivering pizza to the parsonage at the local Catholic church. The newbie goes up by himself gone for a little while, comes back. How'd it go? Asked the veteran. Went great. Where's my half of the tip? And the newbie looks at him with all seriousness and goes, <laughs> I love that joke. 
what I love about it, 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 it reminds us right away that the cross is two directions. That's just half the up and down. There's another half, a cross. Because as we hear about this trouble, about a woman who is bent over with an unjust burden in life, as we hear this story about the trouble of a synagogue leader who is just burdened with a blindness that he cannot see the work of God, so many times we realize that we think it's about being lined up with God, that that image of being straightened up, You know, that's what the word justified means. We as Lutherans always like to say justified by grace through faith. Justified, you know this from your computer and lining up words. It means just lining back up in order. Straightening that what is broken and bent back. Getting in alignment with God. Yes, yes, that is the message. That is the good news. But that's only half. The other half is being in alignment with one another. With our sisters and brothers. The synagogue leader doesn't get it. But we are called to be in alignment with God. And Jesus says the best way to do that is by being in alignment with one another. So where is that good news in the text today? Well, the good news is simply this. Jesus heals on the Sabbath. Jesus heals on the Sabbath. That is good news. We are gathered here today on the Sabbath. I don't know what is bending your back, what is causing your eyes to be downcast, or what is blinding you in anger to the joy of others in the work of God. But hear the good news. Jesus heals on the Sabbath through the words that have been shared, through the supper that's about to be received. Jesus heals on the Sabbath. Thanks be to God that someone is there for us at this time. The other good news in the text is Jesus heals our misconceptions about the Sabbath. He didn't leave the synagogue leader in his ignorance, but taught him to see life from God's perspective, challenged him to grow, challenged him to understand that all these little Sabbath rules they had made were just a burden on people and breaking their backs. Jesus heals those misconceptions where our desires for legalism or pietism totally prevent us from being aligned with our neighbor and with our God. That's the good news in the text. But where's the good news in the world. Sometimes that's the hardest to see. But there are stories. There are stories of people reaching out to those who are starving in the midst of drought to try to figure new ways and better ways to get food to them. You as a congregation have a passion for supporting world hunger, for example, for filling food pantries both here and at Cherokee. It may seem like a little drop in the ocean, but it is good news, and good news to share and to invite others into doing. And while some suffer from drought, others suffer from too much rain and floods, and again, There are people, and our church is part of it too, that focus on disaster relief and trying to get the help to people where they are. There are people who open themselves to their callings from God, whether it be in engineering, where dams are constructed and water is controlled better, or whether it's medicine, or whether it's education. We use our daily work, our lives, our callings, to make our neighbor's life better. And in so doing, we serve our God. There is good news in the world because Christ is in the world. Christ is present. Christ is active. Christ is teaching. And that is good news. 
there will always be trouble in the world. I've lived long enough to realize that's the reality of the world in which we live. But know this, when there is trouble in the world and it's bending you or blinding you, know that there's also trouble in the text. That in God's word are wonderful stories of trouble. That you're not alone. And in wrestling with the trouble in that text, you'll see the good news in the text. And you'll begin to see the good news in the world. And in that hope, we work with God to align the world more to God's calling and purpose. So I don't know if any of you are planning to preach anytime soon, but I hope those four questions become part of your wrestling with the scripture and your wrestling with the tougher days of life. Thanks be to God. Amen.